Vingegaard has to commit all the way to the top of this mountain. And Pogac is not going to do a touch of work all the way. And why should he? And there's here's the attack. Pogaccia rips it now up this mountain. The white jersey has decided, right, yesterday you put me on the ropes. Today I'm going to absolutely blitz it up this mountain. Pogaccia opens up the gap now on Vengegaard. Day one yesterday, Vengegaard had it. Now Pogaccia puts in a big blow to the hopes of the defending champion. Look at the speed of Tade Pogaccia on this mountain now. Vengegaard has to now react. He's been riding all the way up this mountain. He attacked 48 kilometers out. Has it been too much? Because now Pogaccia is disappearing in a blaze of smoke around the corner. Yes, 2.4 kilometers for Tadej Pogacar, but only really 1.4 kilometer before the road starts to go down. Remember, there's about 600 meters of actual downhill that would take you from a kilometer to about 400 meters to go. And then it's a kind of drag about 3, 4% all the way to the finish. So this is to the advantage of Tadej. He's got one kilometer full on to open up a gap on this steeper part of this course. He's already taken 60 meters. Pogaccia is testing Jonas Vengegaard now. Yesterday, Vengegaard and the team were feeling like the whole tour was in their hands. But now this rider has taken it to them and said, you think I'm over? I'm far from over. Take this medicine. And this is the battle in the back now with uh, Rodriguez accelerating with Jai Hindley on the wheel. Hindley now only at 2 minutes 22 seconds. The third man in this Tour de France is now starting to move. Look at Tadej Pogacar, full commitment, full out, twice winner Tour de France. He refuses to be beaten by 